thickness inputs, better heat detection, fully overhauled volumetric smokes, and new lighting were the main promises of CS2 at its release one year ago. After CS2 became available to all players in late September of 2023, and CSGO was effectively phased out of existence, the new surge of players meant a lot of bugs and inconsistencies between CS2 and CSGO came to light. In the following 12 months, Valve promised to mainly focus on polishing the game's core instead of adding new content in order to elevate CS2 to its maximum potential. After the first few months, the update frequency slowed down significantly and we pretty much only got one major update in February, plus some nice smaller updates in the following months, fixing annoying bugs such as the infamous boost bug, as well as quality of life improvements like more static pop and the reintroduction of a slightly changed CL right hand. So since we are now at the one year anniversary, what's the general opinion about CS2's current state? And what are the most pressing issues plaguing CS2? Without a single doubt, the most serious issue at the moment is the poor performance of CS2. It shouldn't come as a surprise that some new additions like the volumetric smokes and especially the ability to temporarily break them with the use of a nade is eating up some of your computer's resources. But on the same vein, other stuff that's arguably completely unnecessary in a competitive game is having an even bigger impact and you're not even allowed to turn it off. The new water effects in CS2 may be pretty, but they're also making damn sure that your FPS will be forever stuck in double digits if you're not on a high-end rig. By now, everyone should be familiar with the pleasant experience that is Ancient's T-Spawn, which is more in common with the laggy PowerPoint presentations during distance learning in a Microsoft Teams meeting when COVID hit us than with an actual video game. And to top it all off, there's been two commands to turn off all of those fancy water particles and whatnot, which greatly boosts your FPS and more or less fixes the problem entirely. But these commands are cheat protected and not allowed to be used outside of private servers. Another performance hog in any game are shadows. And for whatever reason, the CS2 devs decided that it was absolutely 100% necessary to add dynamic lights like these on Agent for instance, which are projecting the shadow of a player onto the environment should someone be in its light cone, giving away their position. Now, in my opinion, it's completely ridiculous to add dynamic shadows into a competitive game, considering the massive performance costs, since you thereby also force everyone on the server to enable them, no matter what this means for their FPS, since you are putting yourself at a competitive disadvantage otherwise. To put it into perspective, let's take a look at how CS2 main competitor, Valorant, handles its performance. In CS2, my frame time is usually hovering around 7 milliseconds give or take, with frequent spikes to 11 to 13 milliseconds whenever there's a lot going on. On the other hand, in Valorant, no matter what is happening on my screen, my frame times are always at a stable 2 to 4 milliseconds without a single spike all game long. Obviously, Valorant is visually no match for CS2, but are graphics really that important in a competitive game as long as you're able to clearly make out what is going on at all times and the game doesn't look like utter trash? Next, we have a combination of subtick, netcode, and general movement. The movement in CS2 is in shambles, partially due to subtick, since the interpolated values of the movement speed aren't 100% matching up with what we used to have in CSGO as this table nicely depicts. Additionally, bunny hops are also completely dead. In CSGO, they weren't exactly easy to pull off, but once you invested some time and got used to the correct timings, stringing together a few of them somewhat consistently wasn't all that hard anymore. However, in CS2, you can count yourself lucky if you manage to land a single B hop in an entire game. Another thing that personally hurt my soul is the absolute state Surf is currently in. I mean, I get it. It's a community mode and not relevant to the actual core gameplay of CS2, which is why it's probably rotting away somewhere on Valve's issue backlog. But as an avid surf enjoyer in CSGO, the ramp bugs in CS2 drive me insane to no end. Like, look at this, it's, it's freaking unplayable. To get back to something more relevant to the actual competitive CS gameplay, Let's take a look how dying around corners and hit registration issues from the early days of CS2 have evolved. Here's a clip from just after the release.
And here's one from roughly two weeks ago. It's still an issue and extremely annoying as well. The only change here is the camera being ported back to where you died on the server instead of remaining in the position you were in locally. Lastly, there's also something weird going on with shooting moving targets, especially when bursting or full out spraying. Now, this can be due to a multitude of reasons, such as the overly dynamic animations of the player models in CS2, horrible visual feedback when a bullet actually hits and when it doesn't hit, and bullet traces that seem to go straight through a player model without actually doing any damage, or even weird things happening in the netcode. For reference, in CSGO, even with bullet traces that weren't in sync with the spray pattern of the server, 99.9% .9 of the time I was able to accurately tell for how much I hit someone just by feeling alone. But in CS2, there are usually several locations per game where I'm 100% certain that I attacked someone for at least 90 plus damage, only for the game to tell me that I didn't hit them at all in the first place, which is a jarring experience to say the least. However, we have to keep in mind that the Source 2 netcode works in fundamentally different ways than the Source 1 netcode, and not everything that's not working as intended in CS2 is always down to subtick. Without having access to proper dev debugging tools, it's hard to say what exactly is causing these problems, so I can only just go as far as to say something is off 100% and not working as intended, but I can't pinpoint what it is. I just hope that Valve will figure it out, eventually. In spite of all the negative things just pointed out by me, which are also quite frequently referenced by the pros as key points that should be tackled next by Valve, it's not all doom and gloom. In fact, I would even say CS2 in its current state is actually fairly playable. Sure, there are still cheaters in non faced matches, but the number of them has drastically gone down in comparison to the beginning of 2024. Fixing the teleporting on getting tagged and the boost bug has gotten rid of two of the three most detrimental issues of the core gameplay, where the remaining one is the jump bug, where you sometimes get stuck in objects when trying to jump on them. As mentioned before, this pretty much only leaves us with performance and hit rig issues that are preventing CS2 from being elevated to a level closer to the one of CSGO. Despite all the memes about Valve not caring about CS2, the new alpha release of Deadlock and the overall negative mood in the community, I'm positive that Valve will do the right thing, eventually, and tackle the core gameplay issues one by one. If that didn't happen in a year's time, you're free to come back to me and rightfully label me as a Valve shield, which a majority of the player base seems to enjoy, based on different threads on Reddit. So to sum it all up, is CS2 in a decent state yet? Nope. Is it playable? Yes. Will it ever get fixed? Most likely. When will it get fixed? I don't know. Anyhow, feel free to leave your own opinions in the comments below, as long as you manage to keep it civil. You can also click the icon to your left in order to subscribe for more CS content, or the video to your right, YouTube things you're likely to enjoy as well. As always, have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Honestly, screw Valve, it's Jova.